Preparing for a mortgage has changed considerably, especially in recent times. In this video, I provide my five must-do mortgage application tips for first-time buyers, which will give you the very best chance of obtaining a mortgage. Remember, preparation is the key to mortgage success. Let's go. Hi, my name's Alex Kerr, I'm a qualified mortgage broker and my passion is simplifying the mortgage process for first-time buyers, as well as providing the best credit scoring and money-saving tips. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Let's get into the vid. The first must do tip, tip one, credit file. Checking your credit file always has to be the first thing that any first time buyer should do. Every single time the first thing, it really gives you an instant understanding of how mortgageable you are at that point. Also, a lot of the time, there could be something on your credit file you can do which will improve your chances of mortgage success. I fully recommend obtaining a multi-agency credit report in where you can see all of the credit agencies that the lenders use in one place. Gone are the days where you can just obtain one credit report as lenders now use up to three different agencies. Get a check my file multi-agency credit report. In my opinion, it's by far the best on the market. It's easy to read unlike the others and provides Experian, Equifax and TransUnion credit reports on one file. These are the three agency mortgage lenders will use to assess your mortgage agreement in principle. They may use more than one provider as well, so it's vital you see how your data is reflected across all three agencies. Click the link in the corner of the screen now to download your free Check My File credit report. You can cancel at any time within 30 days. I've also left the links to other videos I have done providing information on how to check your multi-agency credit file, as well as checking for any errors and missing information which could lead to a declined mortgage, unless they're up to date. Be sure to check those out. I will be touching on this a bit more shortly in tip number two. Tip two, address history. Make sure that you're on the voters roll and that your address with your bank, mobile phone provider, utility provider, and any other credit providers are up to date. If you cannot go on the voters roll, then ensure your addresses are up to date with all of your credit providers. This will do a very similar job. By having your addresses up to date, this will ensure that your credit providers are pulled through onto your credit report. If this is not the case, you will see a grey area under the corresponding credit provider with no data available. You need to ensure your voters roll and linked addresses are correct. If they're not, just get in touch with the voters roll or your credit providers and update them with the correct address history. It really is a vital part of keeping your credit profile up to date so that lenders can credit score you correctly. Tip three. My third tip is all about your documents. Firstly, you need to make sure that you have the correct documents and secondly, they need to have your correct address and your name needs to be spelt correctly across all of the documents as well. They need to be in date and not expired. If your documents are not perfect, the lender will not lend the money. You will need identification such as a passport or driving license. You will also need address verification, a utility bill within the last three months and not a mobile phone bill. If you do not have a utility bill, a bank statement within the last three months can be useful proof of address as well. And sometimes lenders will accept your driving license as proof of address. Income. You'll also need to prove your income three months pay slips along with three months salary credited bank statements. The credits into your bank statements obviously need to tally up with your pay slips. You may need a P60 for the last couple of years. If you do not have these P60s, I would start trying to get them into place. You'll need to contact your employer or previous employer to obtain them. If that's not an option, just go to the HMRC direct. Not all lenders will require one, but if choosing a lender that does, having it prepared now is much better than getting slowed down during a mortgage application. If you're paid an annual bonus, the majority of lenders will want you to prove that for the last two years. So having the pay slips that reflect these bonuses is very important. If you're self-employed, you're going to need between one to three years of SA302s, also known as tax computations, alongside the accompanying tax year overviews. If you're a limited company, you may well need your accounts from a qualified accountant. Proof of deposit. 
I could do a whole video on this and I think I will, but for now it's important to know that you're going to need to prove every single penny and have a trail of your deposit. This is an anti-money laundering requirement that the banks must adhere to. You're going to need to show the bank statements with all of the transactions on starting from zero until your deposit balance. You do not have to provide the bank statements where there are no transactions. For example, if you had one year where you made no deposits, you would not need to provide the bank statements for this year. If you've been provided cash, which has then been deposited into your bank, you're not going to be able to use this as it is not clear where the funds have originated. This goes for anyone gifting you the deposit in cash as well. It needs to be from a clear source such as wages or the sale of an asset, maybe an inheritance. Anything which is a bit grey, such as cryptocurrency for example, is going to face more scrutiny. Tip 4. Employment history. I want you to think about your employment history now. The ideal template is to have at least 12 months in your current position, or at worst case 12 months within the same industry, with no gaps of unemployment. Now there are lenders that will consider less than this, but you're going to close the door to a very large number of lenders available to you. If you're just starting out, mortgage success is all about preparation. I would try and control the urges to start looking for properties as your first step and get mortgage ready first. This doesn't guarantee you success, no mortgage application is guaranteed, but it does give you the very best chance, which is what this game is all about. Whether you are on a zero hours contract or employed full time, 12 months history is ideally where you want to be with your probation period passed. Like I said, there are lenders that may help you with less than this, but your chances of success decrease. And there are no other options should this not come off. Employment history is one of the biggest and most important parts of a mortgage application. If you get that right, you are halfway there. You may need some patience. I can't stress how important it is to build up a good employment history as this provides income which pays the mortgage. Tip five, affordability. You have to understand your affordability before you set foot out of your door and into property viewings. If you're going to look for a car, I imagine you'd understand what your budget is, what your monthly payments you're comfortable with, how much you have to spend, the amount of finance available to you. It's exactly the same with a house. The majority of lenders now provide affordability calculators that are highly accurate, as long as you put the correct figures in them. Don't forget things like student loans, all your credit commitments and expenses like childcare as these elements will decrease the loan amount available to you. It's best to get a mortgage advisor to do this for you, however using a lender's affordability calculator is far better than looking for properties without any effort to establish your affordability and borrowing potential. I always advise to try and stay around four and a half times income as lenders are more comfortable in this area. However, if you need more than that, there are lenders that will lend more. It just means you have less options and the underwriting process will be more stringent. Try not to max out if you can. If you are maxing out above four and a half, up to five, five and a half times your income, just make sure your debt to income ratio is not too high, 15 to 20% as a maximum. Today's question. What steps have you taken to prepare for a mortgage application? Let me know in the comments. If you would like to discuss your mortgage application options, please do book in a free call with us by clicking the link above and choosing the appointment most appropriate to your situation. Please note, we do need to let you know that your home may be repossessed if you do not keep up repayments with your mortgage. So thanks for watching today's video. I hope it's provided you with some useful tips. Please check out the show notes for a recap on today's video with access to any links discussed today. Please do consider subscribing and ringing the bell to receive further notifications when we release our videos. I've been Alex Kerr, providing the best tools and tips to first time buyers. Till next time, stay safe, take care of each other, and we will see you in the next one.